Hi everybody, this is David Farrell with another electronic music video. In this video, we're going to be going into Ableton Live's Multiband Dynamics tool and how we can use it to edit our audio clips. Multiband Dynamics is a powerful tool. It can do a lot of different things to help us clean up our sounds. And so today we're going to be talking about how it works and how to put it into effect to make our music better. Without any further delay, let's do it. Before we start using the software, we just want to talk a little bit about what Multiband Dynamics does. It's a tool that has a bunch of different uses and applications and a couple different steps towards putting it into practice, and so I wanted to go over it here. The first step is that Multiband Dynamics separates your audio into three frequency regions, into three different bands, and you get to choose where those frequency regions start and finish. Once it does that, once you have that low frequency band, that mid frequency band, and that high frequency band, multiband dynamics allows you to control the amplitude in each of those frequency regions. And so you can amplify the amplitude or attenuate the amplitude in any of your three frequency regions. That might not sound like a big deal, right? Uh, we have filters that can kind of do that. We have EQ that can kind of do that. And uh, so what is special about multiband dynamics? Well, multiband dynamics lets you go one step further. In each of your frequency bands, it allows you to divide the audio into some more regions based on their own loudness. And so, and from here, you can adjust the amplitude then of any of the regions in each of your frequency bands. What that means is you can select high frequency, high amplitude sounds, and you can amplify those or attenuate them. You can select high frequency, low amplitude sounds, and you can amplify or attenuate those sounds. And you can do this in the mid frequencies as well. You can take the high, the high amplitude sounds, the loud sounds, and make them louder or softer. You can also take the mid frequency, low amplitude sounds, the quiet sounds, and try to make them louder or softer. And you can do this with low frequencies as well. So you have all these different areas and you have control over where they are. You get to define what a loud sound is. You get to define what a quiet sound is. You get to define what the high frequency space is and the low frequency space is. In practice, we can use this to emphasize spectral areas of our sounds in a similar way that we use filters in EQ. But another thing that we can do, and what I'm going to be talking about today, is that we can use this to sort of clean up recorded sounds. Recorded sounds often have some unwanted noise, background, uh, other things that we just don't want in our sounds. And multiband dynamics is a really useful tool to clean up those sounds so that all we have is the audio that we really wanted to record. Let's move into Ableton and see how we can put this stuff into practice. Okay, we have switched to Ableton Live and I've got a multiband dynamics object loaded in to one of my tracks. Multiband dynamics is found in the audio effects sidebar over here. And so if you're looking for it, all you have to do is drag it into one of your tracks and it'll show up. I'm gonna start by talking about the different settings of multiband dynamics, how to work with this object. Uh, just looking at it, there's a lot of interface here and I wanna go over the basics from left to right then I'll put it into practice and do some work on a sound with it. So the first controls we see on the far left side here are controlling the different frequency bands. This controls what frequencies go into the low band, what frequencies go into the mid band, and what frequencies go into the high band. You set the border between the low and mid band here. It's defaulted at 120 hertz. You can type in different frequencies or you can click and drag to set wherever that you want that low band to be. I'll leave it at the default for now. You can also set the high band here. It defaults to 2,500 hertz or 2.5 kilohertz. And again, you can type in and move it around. Well, the mid band will always be in between these two. And if for some reason you don't want to use all three bands, you can turn a band off. Then all you're going to have is whatever's below this number and above this number. You'll just have a lower band. The mid and low will be combined. Uh, you can do the same with the high should you like to, okay? Here we have uh, some, a nice feature, which is this feature to solo different bands. This is really useful, and I'll be using this when I'm editing sounds. What this does is turns off all the frequencies from the other bands. It allows you to only hear what's going on in your low frequency band. It allows you to only hear what's going on in your mid frequency band and allows you to only hear what's going on in your high frequency band. And when we're editing, this is useful to make sure that our bands are useful. We have some gains on our input. This allows us to 
amplify the frequencies in any band before they go through any of our multiband dynamics processing. They're defaulted, of course, to zero dB, but you can make them louder or softer before processing, should you like to. The middle of the screen is where all the magic happens. This is where we can uh, mess with all of our different bands. There are these three little letters over here. B and A represent the below threshold and above threshold uh, settings. I'm going to start with the below threshold settings. The below threshold settings allow us to set the dynamic threshold where we define a quieter sound or a low amplitude sound. You can see that right now the default is that low amplitude below the threshold sounds are all sounds below 60 decibels. This ratio is how we're going to amplify or attenuate those sounds. We can type in numbers here or we can do it graphically through on the screen here. For instance, as I, draw, as I drag this rectangle over, you'll see that my below threshold is getting higher. What this is doing is grabbing more and more quiet sounds to amplify or attenuate. Now it's going to amplify or attenuate a bunch more sounds, every sound that is below negative 39 decibels. I can drag it further and it can get even more. Okay, so this allows us to define how quiet a quiet sound is. If we only want the quietest sounds, then maybe we want to uh, set our below threshold very low. And this way we'll only be amplifying or attenuating a small amount of sounds. On the other hand, if we've got a lot of stuff that we don't want, then maybe our below threshold will need to be higher. It'll depend on the sound we're editing. In terms of altering the amplitude or attenuation, what I typically end up doing is clicking and dragging up to make it louder. And you'll see the ratio here is changing to positive numbers and the color is changing to a brown color. That means that we're amplifying our sounds. Our sounds will be 2.53 uh, times louder than uh, they originally were. Or I can drag down. If I click and drag down, my sounds will get quieter. And it, you see the color has turned blue. Now we're attenuating our quiet sounds. Our quiet sounds are becoming half as loud, 1 to 0.5. The controls for this are the same in all of my different frequency bands. I can click and drag. I can, of course, type if you want to reset, just type one. If you want to change the ratio, you can change the ratio here to, oh, I typed in 0.5, that gives me a one to two ratio. If I type in like a two, that gives me a half ratio, okay? Um, and so easy interface to work with here. I, I typically use the graphical interface, I won't lie, but if you want something more precise, obviously type that thing in. If I click A, I get to do the same thing, but I set the above threshold. The below thresholds, recall, are for sounds that are below a particular decibel threshold. The above boxes then are for sounds that are above a particular decibel threshold. The default is negative 20 decibels. And what that means is we can amplify or attenuate all the content in each frequency band that is above this decibel reading. And just like our below threshold, we can change it. We can drag it. We can try to grab louder sounds from negative 30 or above if we want to get more sounds in our loud band. Or we can grab fewer sounds. Maybe we only got to want to get the very, very loudest of the loud sounds. In that case, I might only take things that are negative 10 or above. We can do this, of course, for all our bands, and we can drag in the same way. Notice that the ratios are a little bit inverted here. This is a, 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 something that might be a little counterintuitive. In our below ratios, uh, positive number ratios tend to uh, in increase the sound and uh, in fraction ratios tend to decrease the sound. Here it's the other way. The colors are the same. When it turns brown, it turns that dark brown. That means you're amplifying. When it turns blue, you are attenuating, okay? And so this allows us to control all of those different bands. We have Another set of output gains. This allows us to amplify or attenuate a band after it's gone through the multiband dynamic processing. And then we've got a couple of other final controls here. We, can, we have an overall boost booster here, an output gain that allows us to amplify or attenuate. And boy, I keep saying those words, but that's what's happening here. Amplify or attenuate the completed full sound from all the bands. We have a time scale, and this allows us to do some sort of envelope things for our multiband dynamics. When we're doing sound editing, I, I typically don't use this very much. And finally, this amount controller, which uh, allows us to sort of set how much 
processing is actually happening here. The default is 100%, which means that uh, everything we do here is gonna be done 100%. If you want the effect to be more subtle, you can turn this down. At zero, uh, we won't do anything. And so some other nice side effects. This is a quick run through the basic controls of multiband dynamics. A quick run through the basic controls. The majority of the action happens here in this window and here where we're setting frequencies, okay? That's where the majority of the action is. This allows us to define what the frequency components of each band are. And in the middle here, these big rectangles allow us to set the thresholds for low amplitude sounds on the left and high amplitude sounds on the right and decide whether we want to amplify or attenuate those sounds. That's what multiband dynamics does. So what are some practical uses? Well, there's a lot of different things we can do with this. It's just a fun tool in terms of editing the loudness of different parts of our spectrum. But one way that I find it particularly useful is to edit recorded sounds. Let's listen to something that I've got recorded here. So that's a recording of kind of a loud banging sound uh, and it's, it was recorded outside and there's a lot of noise in that sound. I might like some of the percussion sounds, I might like some of those big crashing sounds, but boy, you can hear a lot of hiss and ambiance in that sound. And so what I can do with multiband dynamics, of course, is cut this sound up into pieces. I can say, hey, let's find the high amplitude parts of that sound and amplify them so that we can keep them in my sound and make them nice and loud. And let's find the lower amplitude sounds, all that background stuff that I don't want, and attenuate them so I don't have to hear them. I'm gonna do this using multiband dynamics. I'm gonna be watching the lovely levels that I get in here because that's gonna give me a good idea of where the sound uh, amplitudes are and see if I can't do some editing. So I've got this in three bands. I've got the default bands. Let's listen to each frequency band really quick. We can see that there's not a lot of action in this low frequency land, but there's certainly, there's certainly some of our sound living here. Okay, there's a lot of noise in this mid band that I'm gonna to have to work with. And likewise in our high band, we can hear it. I'm gonna to stick to these default settings for now. I'm gonna to stick to these default settings for now and see if I can't work with them. What I'd like to do is to set my low amplitude thresholds, the thresholds below which I want to edit, so that I'm getting pretty much all the sound that isn't those loud banging percussive sounds. And so I'm gonna watch and see if I can't do this for each of my bands. I'm gonna start with the high frequency band. We can see where it peaks by just looking graphically. And so I'm gonna drag my low frequency band pretty high and start attenuating. That's better, I've gotten rid of some things. I'm gonna drag it a little bit higher because I still hear some more. And you can hear them going away. You can hear all those crackles going away as I drag it up, wow. Okay, that's pretty good. I've taken most of the sound out of it. Just for uh, a test, let's, we can turn off multiband dynamics. That turns off the whole thing. So uh, we can see that we're missing a lot of those parts of the sound. I'm gonna do the same for my mids. I'm gonna turn my low frequency sounds way down, and I'm gonna start dragging this up. Ah, here we start to find them. That's much better. We can see that I've attenuated the vast majority of, of a pretty wide range of sounds. I had a lot of loud ambient noise that I didn't want here. And so I, my, I set my band to negative 16.8 decibels. That's pretty high, but it's cut out a lot of sound. Let's go to the low band. There's less noise here, but there still is some. And so I'm gonna to try to turn that down as well. Ah, we've cut out some of that background noise. And again, now we're left with something a little better. Let's take a listen. This is my new sound. Here, just for our reference, here's what it used to sound like.
One thing I might also do if I want to try to accentuate the sounds of the sound is go the other way and, and amplify the loud parts. Now that I've turned down the background, I might say, you know, I want to amplify some of the other sounds, some of those percussive sounds. And so I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. I'm going to try to set my levels on my above threshold amplitudes. So I'm going to try to grab some of those loud sounds that I really like and turn them up a little bit so I get a little bit more out of them. And I'm going to do it the same way. We'll start with the high frequency band, and I'm going to drag it right up to the edge of my other. And just get a little bit more punch from my high frequencies. I'll do the same here. And I'll do the same here. In particular here, it's very quiet. gives me a good knock and I'm peaking a little bit because I might have amplified a little bit too much. Whenever we're amplifying a signal, we want to make sure our levels are pretty good. And so this is a nice test case for using multiband dynamics to edit a sound. The method that I used is a method I, that I've used before with recorded sounds, which is trying to find a useful place to attenuate the quieter sounds. A lot of times there are quiet sounds in my recordings that I don't want to have there, and multiband dynamics is really good at getting rid of them. You can see that I took a kind of trial and error approach with the graphical interface. I was looking at the orange level meter bars and trying to use that to sort of visually show me where I can set things. At the same time, I'm listening and using my ears to help me uh, make sure everything sounds the way it's supposed to. Then I went the other direction and tried to amplify the louder sounds. These are the sounds I wanted, and if I wasn't happy with their levels, I could try to turn them up. If you're happy, you don't need to amplify them, great, you're done. And again, just for reference, we can listen to the two versions of the sound and see what a pronounced difference it makes. Here's my edited sound. And here is unedited. Yeah, listen to all that, listen to all that noise. Ugh. If you want to use real world recorded sounds in your music, um, everything you record will show up in your music all that ambient sound. And if you have three or four or five samples at once, all of which have ambient noise hiss in the background, it's really gonna add up and become something that you don't want in your music. Multiband dynamics is a really excellent way to remove those things from your sound. That's it for this video, friends. And this one, we talked about multiband dynamics, just one topic this week. We looked into that particular tool in Ableton Live. We talked about what it can be used for. We talked about all the different controls that it has. And then we did a quick demo of how one might use it to adjust a recorded sound to prepare it for use in a piece of music or in any other sort of audio uh, scenario. Hope you found this one useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys.